I want you to tell that girl exactly how you feel. If you don't, we'll meet with guns, and only one of us will walk away. Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875, the Carlton Hotel, headquarters of the man called Paladin. Uh, it is your move, Miss Wong. Well, uh, Mr. Wong have duties to perform. He boy must do them. Oh, duties can wait. Uh, you move. Mr. Paladin, must I move? I'm afraid you'll have to, Miss Wong, or resign the game. Oh, that is good. Uh, Miss Wong, resign. Oh, no, no, you cannot do that. Uh, you win from Hey Boy, now Hey Boy win from you. Uh, hey Boy, if she resigns, you're the winner. No, 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 she robbed me of pleasure of winning. Uh, you move. Oh. You move. Very well. Checkmate. Oh, I... <laughs> oh, you have duties. Why do you not do them? Oh, hey, boy, have duties also. <laughs> oh. oh. Hey, boy, takes his chest so seriously. Mr. Wong, very unwise to make hey, boy angry. No, he'll get over it. Oh. Perhaps the next time, Miss Wong, just a, <laughs> a small amount of discretion. But when you teach me to play chess, you not teach me how to lose. Well, yes, but every woman must know how to lose, Miss Wong, and when. Ah, oh, yes, sir. Oh, Miss Wong will remember. <laughs> Good. You need help now, Miss Apollo? No, thank you. I'm all packed and ready to go. Do you stay long? I don't think so. Oh, uh, is the job with danger? Possibly. Are you smoking more now, but enjoying it less? Have a real cigarette, have a camel. The best tobacco makes the very best smoke. Have a real cigarette, have a camel. Are you looking for flavor and mildness? Have a real cigarette, have a camel. The best tobacco makes the very best smoke. Have a real cigarette, a real cigarette, a real cigarette, have a camel. If you're smoking more today, but enjoying it less, try Camels. The Camel blend of costly Turkish and domestic tobaccos has never been equal for rich flavor, easygoing mildness, real smoking satisfaction every time you light up. The best tobacco makes the best smoke. Have a real cigarette, a real cigarette, a real cigarette, have a Camel. Melvin Jeffrey had sent me $500 to come to Porterville. It seemed he was having trouble with a man named Court Newman. I had once known a sergeant in the cavalry during the war by that name, and I was curious to see if he was the same person. The sun was setting when I arrived in the little town, propped casually on the sloping foothills of the Sierras. Jeffrey met me at the hotel and insisted I have dinner at his home. His daughter, Myra, had prepared an excellent meal which would have been more enjoyable without the uneasy silence between the banker and his daughter. <sighs> oh, that was a fine dinner, Miss Jeffrey. You're a superb cook. It takes time to learn to cook. I have a lot of time. Yes, I guess we all do. The difference is in how we use it. How do you use yours, Mr. Paladin, with a gun? Myra, that's uncalled for. Is it? That's what he is, isn't he? A gunfighter? Oh, uh, she's upset, Paladin. She didn't want me to send for you. Should I, Father? When you're trying to take court from me, hiring a gunfighter to kick him out of town? He's no good for you. No man's any good for me as far as you're concerned. It's always been that way. Court Newman wants to marry you just so he can get to my money. Why do you keep saying that? Because you're Melvin Jeffrey's daughter and we have money. Now, let's not discuss you it any You think money further. is everything? You think that's all I have to offer a man? 
Will money cure the loneliness inside of me? I don't know what you're talking about. No, Father. No, you don't. Uh, she's wrought up, Paladin. You'll have to excuse her. Maybe she has a reason. Reason? Let me tell you something, Paladin. I've worked hard for my money all my life. I've scrimped and saved, and I've got something to show for it. That's why no man like Court Newman or anybody else is going to take it away from me. Or my daughter. You sure that's what he's trying to do? You bet it is. He's just like his folks. They're always trying to get money from me. But Court figures he'll get it for nothing. His parents live in Porterville? Yeah, he used to. Had a miserable little ranch outside of town. They're always trying to borrow on it. I had to foreclose. They wouldn't keep up payments. I see. Well, I have to get back to the hotel. Thanks for the dinner, Mr. Jeffrey. Yeah, I uh, walk you to the door. Thank you. Sorry you have to leave so early. Well, it was a hard ride from San Francisco. I need a good night's sleep. Now, don't forget what you came here for. Get Court Newman, and I don't care how you do it. I haven't said I'd take the job. Not take it. I paid you $500 to come here. You'll get your money back if I decide not to work for you. But if I do take the job, I'll see to it my own way. Good night, Mr. Jeffrey. Mr. Paladin? Huh? Oh, uh, Miss Jeffrey. I wanted to see you alone. Why? There's one thing you have to know. My father's wrong about court. Is he? Yes. There was another man once a long time ago, and it was the same thing. A gunfighter was hired, and my friend was beaten and chased away. But it won't happen this time. Miss Jeffrey, I am not planning on beating anyone. I'm not young and pretty anymore, Mr. Paladin. But Court loves me, and I love him. I'm sure you do. Then you remember this. Nothing's going to keep us apart. Not my father, not you, not anybody. Constipation can be a problem for anyone, even doctors. And when constipation occurs, it's interesting to see just what doctors consider important about a laxative they might use or recommend. Well, a majority of the doctors we heard from had this to say. A laxative should be effective, gentle, as close to natural acting as possible, and a medicine that can be used with complete confidence. Now, Exlax has been popular with many doctors and millions of people over the years because chocolate at Exlax is effective. Overnight, it helps you toward your normal regularity. Exlax is gentle. Next morning, it gives you the closest thing to natural action. And that's why many doctors and millions of people use Exlax with complete confidence. Exlax, the laxative that helps you toward your normal regularity gently. Overnight. Is Exlax in your medicine cabinet? I could see the haunting loneliness in the eyes of Myra Jeffrey. The loneliness of a woman who had missed love, who had been denied it by a possessive, selfish father. And I could see something else. A fierce pride that must have made it difficult for her to talk to me about her feeling for court. The next morning, I decided to look up Court Newman and get his side of it. I found him in the Porterville Saloon, and even though I had halfway expected it, I was surprised to see he was the man I had known years before, Sergeant Newman of the United States Cavalry. Captain. Hey, Sergeant. Captain Hello, Sergeant. Hey. How are you? Or should I say Mr. Newman? Yeah, sure should, Captain. I got me a discharge oh. over a year now. By golly, it's good to see <laughs> well, you. Yeah, it's been eight, uh, ten years. Yes, it has at that. Well, what are you doing in these parts? You live around here? No, might say I'm just passing through. Well, now, don't that beat all. It just shows it's a small <laughs> little world, don't it? Well, how about you, Corey? <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, I, I live here, Bob. You mean in town? That's right. We had a little place, but... Ah, well, I don't want to burn your ear with that kind of talk. Now, come on, come on, let's sit at a table. I'll buy you a beer. Barkeep! Yeah? Bring two beers to the table there in the corner. Yes, sir. Well, what, what kind of work are you doing now, Court? Oh, you know, ranch work mostly. Oh? Uh, you know, it's funny, I always figured that you were, you were a lifetime army man. Ah, uh, so did I, so did I, but uh, things happen. Oh, how so? Well, like I said, Captain, I don't want to burn your ear with that kind of talk. I'm interested, Court. 
Yeah. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Well, I got my discharge. I figured on re-enlisting right away. But I wanted to come back and visit my folks a while first. I see. They had a little spread out of town, but when I got here, I, I found they'd been thrown out, clear off their property. By the banker? Yeah, he... Well, how'd you know that? I know, Mr. Jeffrey. Oh. Well, my folks are proud people, Captain. What happened, like to broke them. Well, were they cheated out of their ranch court? I'll say they were. They, they just fell back on some of their payments and that stinking banker foreclosed on them. Well, that sounds like the law was in Jeffrey's favor. Well, that don't make it right. Maybe not. But you know what? <laughs> I'm going to get that, Jeffrey. I'm going to fix him good for what he done to my folks. I'm already working on it. You are, huh? Yeah, <laughs> I sure am. There's two things in this world that man thinks about. One's money, and the other is his daughter, in that order. So? So I've been playing up to his daughter for quite a spell now, and I got her eaten out of my hand. I take it then you don't particularly care about her? Her? Of course not. But I'm going to marry her, Captain. Yes, sir, I'm going to marry her, and then I'll have half of what belongs to that old skinflint, his daughter and whatever money she's worth. Mm. <laughs> That's a pretty rotten thing to do, Court. <laughs> what? Have you ever stopped to think of what you might be doing to the girl? Well, what are you getting so uppity about? Court, where did you bury your self-respect? That girl loves you. How come you know so much anyway? I thought you was just passing through it. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now it's getting clear. She told me that old miser was going to hire a gunfighter to get rid of me. You're the one. You're him, aren't you? What happened to you, Court? You're not the same man I used to know. I'm the same one, right enough. <laughs> Thanks for the beer. Captain? Yeah? There's just one thing. What's that? Maybe you remember there was only one man in our whole cavalry outfit could handle a gun better than you. And that was me. If dandruff dulls your hair, leaves your scalp itchy, please listen. You can get rid of annoying dandruff so fast today, no one should suffer any longer. With Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo, unsightly dandruff's gone in three minutes. It's the quickest, easiest of all leading shampoos. Besides that, using Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep embarrassing dandruff away. Simply apply in the unique Fitch manner. Before you wet hair, rub in one minute. This way, Fitch Shampoo penetrates right down to the scalp. Next, add water. Lather one minute to wash every trace of dandruff out of your hair. Then rinse one minute. All that loosened dandruff goes down the drain. In three minutes with Fitch, one rubbing, one lathering, one rinsing, dandruff's gone. And while removing dandruff, Fitch can also brighten hair up to 35%. To get rid of dandruff problems forever, brighten hair too. Use Fitch regularly. Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo today, only 59 cents. <laughs> Miss Jeffrey. May I come in? Oh, well, please, yes, yes, of course. Mr. Paladin, I'll not waste your time. How much is my father paying you to get rid of court? Well, now I... It doesn't don't... matter. Whatever it is, I'll double it if you leave town right now. I can't do that. Why? If I leave, he'll just hire someone else. I'll worry about that when it happens. Oh. Have you uh, ever thought that maybe your father is right about Court Newman? Don't say that. Don't you ever say that. It could be true. No. Court loves me. Please leave, Mr. Paladin. I'm sorry, I can't. I'm begging you. I'm sorry. Now, it isn't that I'd... I'd... Oh, now, wait a minute. I'm going to kill you, Mr. Paladin. Now, you better think very carefully before you pull that trigger. You leave me no choice. I've got to do it. <coughs> Drop the gun. Now. No. Drop it. No. Now, that was a very <laughs> foolish thing to try. 
you don't know how it is. Please leave us alone. Miss Jeffrey, I want you to do something for me. What? Stay here in my room until I get back. Why? What are you going to do? I'm going to find Court Newman. Court, get up. Is this it, Paladin? Is this the time? This is the time, but not for a gunfight. Now get up on your <laughs> Get up. I'll kill you, Paladin. I get up, Court. Get up. I want to hit you again. No, I, I can't. I, 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 I've had enough. I gotta tell you something, Court. Myra Jeffrey is up in my room. Well, what's she doing there? She loves you. She loves you so much she tried to kill me to keep you from getting hurt. What? Just a few minutes ago in my room. She. You're going up to that room and you're gonna tell her the truth about how you've been leading her on. But you're gonna tell her gentle and easy, Court, because if you don't, we will meet with guns. But only one of us will walk away. You think she came here from the hotel room, Paladin? I hope so. Uh, Paladin, what? What's Newman doing here? Mr. Jeffrey... Get off my place. Mr. Jeffrey, is your daughter here? Yes, she's here. Came busting in a few minutes ago and ran right to her room. Now, what's this all about? It's my fault, Mr. Jeffrey. Paladin here finally beat some sense into me, and I, I told her. Told her what? About how I didn't really love her at all. You told her that? That's right. I want to tell her how sorry I am. <laughs> Paladin, you did it. You made this saddle tramp eat dirt. Now Myra won't be so smart. Now she'll listen to me. She's been listening to you too many years, Jeffrey. Oh, is that so? Well, I was right, wasn't I? Yes, you were right about court, but you were wrong about a lot of other things. What? What? That came from Myra's room. Done. I, I didn't really mean to. It, it was an accident. How did it happen? Oh, just, just an accident. That's all. Go get a doctor, Paladin. No. It's too late. Maybe it's best this way. And don't, don't say that. I couldn't stand the loneliness anymore. Not again. But I'd give you anything, anything in the world. Except love. That's one thing you couldn't give me. What do you mean? Court. I'm here, Myra. I'm sorry, Court. I'm sorry I wasn't pretty enough for you. <laughs> Myra. I did this, Paladin. I did this to her. You dirty, filthy saddle tramp. You murdered my daughter. You killed her. No. No, Mr. Jeffrey. You were just the last reason. She started dying a long time ago. When you forgot that a human being has to have love. Newspapers, Mr. Paladin. Oh, thank you, hey boy. Uh, hey boy, notice you feel sad when you came back from trip. Uh, you feel it better now? Oh, yes, much better, thank you. Oh, that is good. Uh, is that the only reason you're grinning? Oh, no, sir, no. Uh, hey boy, very happy. Hey boy, very good chess player. Oh? Oh, yes, uh, uh, play ten games, win all ten. Ten games? Huh? With whom? Oh, <laughs> Missy Wong. I think she just lucky before. Uh, now, hey boy, win first four moves. <laughs> 
first four moves. You mean that you won all ten games in the first four moves? Oh, you saw. Well, I'd say that was carrying discretion a little too far. Oh, uh, hey boy, not understand. No, never mind, hey boy. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, I go now, Mr. Paladin. Uh, have duties. All right, hey boy. Thank you. Ah. Oh, excuse please, Mr. Paladin. Oh, hello, Miss Wong. I see hey boy talking to you. He tell you about chess games. Yes, he did. <laughs> Uh, ten games I can understand, but letting him win all ten in the first four moves, Miss Wong, I think you missed the point. Oh, no, sir. Miss Wong, not Miss Point. She make him boy think he's a very good chess player. Let him win games. Well, yes, but yes. I think you're being a little too obvious. You should give him 20 or 30 moves before you let him win. Oh, Miss Paladin cannot do that. If Miss Wong let him boy have more than four moves, he lose again. He's a very bad chess player. <laughs> Miss Wong, you win. Oh, brother, this miserable cold and my sinuses. Haven't you heard about Dristan? Dristan decongestant tablets not only help drain all eight sinus cavities, critical areas of colds infection, but circulating through the blood, Dristan reaches all congested areas. In one fast-acting, uncoated, three-layer tablet, Dristan, for the first time combined, a decongestant to shrink all swollen membranes, relieve pressure and pain. An exclusive anti-allergent to help keep breathing passages dry and clear. Pain relievers to ease body aches, reduce fever. Vitamin C to help build body resistance. This is Dristan. Today, Dristan is widely imitated, but the exclusive Dristan formula cannot be duplicated. For real relief from colds, misery, and sinus congestion, there is nothing, nothing like Dristan decongestant tablets. Have gun, will travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed in Hollywood by Frank Paris and stars John Daner as Paladin, with Ben Wright as Hey Boy and Virginia Gregg as Miss Wong. Tonight's story was specially written for Have Gun, Will Travel by Ray Kemper. Featured in the cast were Jack Moyles, Paul Dubov, and Gene Bates. We'd like to give a sincere welcome to three new affiliate stations of the CBS Radio Network. KBEE, Modesto, California, KFBK, Sacramento, California, and WATV, Birmingham, Alabama. This is Hugh Douglas inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents Have Gun, Will Travel. <laughs>